Hello, hello. Hey, man, what's up? Hey, how you doing? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you well. You? I, I, I'm I, doing good, man, and I can... You sound good to me, too. Um, are you on... Are we going to be doing this on the European or the North American server today? North American, yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm already on. Uh, are you on right now as well? Yeah, I am. Uh, Remind me how to do this. All right, so just click... Left-click your top right avatar portrait. Mm -hmm. And then on the left side where it says ladders, click it. And then click it again in the same spot for Grandmaster. And then just scroll down. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 sorry, sorry. Left click it, and then on the left side, uh, ladders. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. And then same spot, Grandmaster, click it again. Yeah. And then yeah. scroll down to rank one, f 145. And you can just right click and uh, open up chat. There. Yeah. Perfect. All right. So, and then uh, when we started up the replay, just uh, before you actually start the replay, make me the lobby host in the actual replay lobby, and then that's all you're gonna do. Okay. So let me ask you a question. Um, I don't know what replay to use. I have, I have one game. That I just I tried to play a couple of games today just to get something and I have one game that I just straight up lose like there's nothing happening we just one attack I lose and then there's one game where there's a lot of action and I win yeah but it's I guess because because it's like it's a lot of stuff happening so it's not as clean I guess mm -hmm. so I don't know I don't know which one is um I mean if you, it's I mean I'm glad you played either one of them today I think that's the most relevant thing uh, I would say just we could, we might be able to get through both of them as well. Uh, it depends on how much stuff we're going to talk about, but just pick either one for now, and we can start it up. And then uh, there's going to be lots of stuff we can talk about either way. Uh, and then we'll we'll really dive into like specifics about what you're looking for. Okay, let's let's do then the game where it's really boring, where I just die straight out and, and I lose a lot of games like that, but it's just nothing happening in there though. Hopefully we can get through this pretty quickly. Um, uh, so if I, if I found, if I find the, the replay, what do I press? So, uh, uh watch without it. Yep. Per yeah. And then make me the lobby host right here in this. Just right-click my name, and then there will be an option for that. And then that's it. And which one is your ID right now in this? Is, is it the Protoss or the Zerg? It's the Protoss. Okay. All right, so... Uh... And uh, when you're when you're playing uh, Protoss versus Zerg, what is your general idea of how you want to go about playing this matchup, basically? Oh man, this is not that game. Oh whatever. We, we, whatever. No, we, this is the this is. We could leave if you want, and we could restart another one if uh, you if you would prefer. Yeah, yeah, let's restart another one, Starman. Okay. This is the one that was. Uh, no worries. A little bit more, cra a little bit more crazy. Than <clears throat> Should I just uh, quit replay? Yeah, just leave replay. We just just host it, host it up again the same way with the other one. Um, and I don't want to distract you too hard here. Uh, while you're, I don't want to, you know, make it annoying. But uh, when you get a second, just tell me what you think your general theme of like Protoss versus Zerg is. Like, you know, it doesn't have to be very long. Just like a general idea of how you like playing the matchup or what you try and go for. You want me to tell right now? Uh, yeah, just give me the leader, and then there you go, perfect. And go for it. Tell me, tell me what you like. That way, I can kind of see the way your build is, so I can see if it's like a good or a bad build going towards something like that. Uh, honestly, I don't really have a build. I I would love to know how to place Sky because I heard that Sky okay. is really strong right now versus sure. Zerg, but I, I just can never. I feel like it's easy countered because if they scout. And I don't do a lot of pressure with the adepts in the beginning of the game, it, and I go straight to sky. It just gets denied really quickly. But I can do adept pressure because I just I'm not good enough to do multitasking like that. Okay. Uh, so 
Oh. So right now I'm just playing like a normal like ground game, basically. N no strat, no specific build. All right. So your sky, I'll just say it right now. Sky is really hard. Like the way maps are designed, if you have a small entrance to your natural and a small entrance to your third, that makes sky toss better. And if you also only have one entrance to your natural and one entrance to your third, that makes sky even better. This map, you it doesn't quite fit that rule because uh, I'm going to pause it just for a second. And I'm going to say there are two entrances to your third base and there's only one entrance to your natural. So you have basically you have three entrances to your bases instead of two. So as crazy as this sounds, if you actually want to play Sky Toss and you want to and you're thinking to yourself, OK, Sky Toss sucks for me. Like I just can't make it work or I'm trying to make it work and it's, it's difficult. What you should start doing is either, well, number one is you're going to have to get a little bit more comfortable with the depths if you want to go about it the way you're walling your base off right now, which is more standard, or this pylon gateway should actually be at the ramp where the rocks are, just below where it is right mm -hmm. now. So you, what, you could, uh -huh. what you could do is you could create two entrances to your base because you could have a ramp there be one entrance, and then on the left side where your third oh, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. that could be the other. It's riskier yeah. if you get all in, but it's the only way you're going to actually just be able to go sky toss right away. If that's what you want to go for. No, I don't. I, I don't want to go sky toss. I, I don't really care what build I'm doing. I just I'm just saying that I I just started learning Protoss. I've, I've been playing Terran the whole time, sure. and I've been with Terran. I had like 75% win versus Zerk, and now Zerk is my like with Protoss. I get killed all the time by Zerk. Okay, so, so it's just it's just annoying at this point, and I don't re I don't care what build. It okay, is. I really don't. All right, so I'm gonna give you a build then. That's uh, it will. Like I do think Sky Toss is like always something good to go into later at some point. It is very fucking strong if you have good, uh, control of the map. But what we can have you do then is we can have you go for like some type of like an immortal build, like an immortal archon based build, and then you can go into Sky Toss after that. After you send your first army out, you can rotate your tech into something different then. Uh, that's... And Immort immortal and archon are are versus. What are they good versus? Like, like I said, they're, like I just learned. They're Pro good versus Protoss, and I, I don't know exactly what's like what counters what unit. Immortal Archon, if macroed well, is good against everything except Aspire. Uh, you're you're mm -hmm. like you're gonna find everything is not that bad unless you're fighting Mutalisk. Uh, then it gets a little annoying. But if you so you're supposed to rush it, it will like sort of. Uh, you're you're gonna be. I'll show you a build as well that'll make a lot of sense, but the way the build would kind of go would be like you would be going for uh, a council opener first. You could do, you do kind of need to do something to throttle the Zerg a little bit. Uh, the only time you should ever go Robo first is if it's like a two base all in, and that's not what we're talking about. You could open up with a council first. You could, you could do some type of a little pressure. I do think Adepts is the safest way to do it because Adepts is the safest way to take your third as well. And then you go into charge mm -hmm. after adept glaive, and then you go into a robo with a templar archives, and it starts becoming charge archon immortal for a little while. And you're so what? What would you say? What time is a good time to take that robo? A good time to take your third. A uh, good time to take your robo is uh, as you take your third, like right around like four forty-five, uh, or like like four like roughly around four minutes. Four minutes to like 4.30, somewhere in that time frame, and then you take your third at 4.45. So then as your third finishes, you're already starting to pump Immortals. <clears throat> like, you, like you would want to right now be having a council being upgraded with, um, like you would have a council right now being upgraded with Resonating Glaives, and you would what have you? you would have Adepts being made right now, and then you would be making that Robo, like this Robo's, uh, it's... You could, like, it, yeah, it probably would be made a tad bit later than you did make it this game, but again, you would have, you don't have the council, and you you also would have the council, too, right now. Uh, like I said before, I think council is the safest way to open against Zerg. Um, it, just because if, if a player goes for a speedling, mass speedling type build, you are never going to be able to take a third base, unless you're all inning, and like, unless you're all in the Zerg, and then you do an all in first, and then like, you don't win the game, but you shove him back. Like, yeah. like mass and, things will fuck and you. I, and I just build nonstop 
uh, a depth ver from two gates. You actually go and, uh, until until I'm able to uh, uh, get the robo. <clears throat> so with this build, what I want you to start doing, um, well, I I want to give you an example build too, just to make sure we can like really solidify all of it and make it easy to understand. But you'll what you'll ideally be doing is you'll be opening up one gate, I obviously for the opener. Don't worry about walling your natural off as like as fast as you can, unless the Zerg is going gas pool before hatchery. So if he goes if he goes for like a gas in a pool before he expands, then yes, you need to prioritize your wall. But if he doesn't, you're not gonna make your second and third gateway until like 34 to 36 supply. And you're gonna make them at the same time. Uh, which is very it's still very fast, it's just not prioritized super quick. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna do at a timing that is five it's five adepts. And because uh, what's going to happen is, is you're going to make two you're going to make a stalker and two adepts out of your first gateway while getting warp gate, and then warp gate's going to finish. And the, when you time your gateways like this, the second and third gateway, those gateways are both going to finish right as warp gate finishes. And then you're going to have a round of three things all at once to add on to your first two adepts, so you can make five adepts for a five adept timing. And then out of the five adept timing is when you're going to be going for. Uh, more gateway units to back up your immortals to defend your third base and even, uh, eventually get archons. That's kind of the idea yeah. about how this goes. <clears throat> and then, uh, last thing is, while you go archon charge on immortal, you can then do a follow-up timing, which might kill the zerg, but if it doesn't, that's when you're switching into uh, into Stargate build. Um, well, you know, into Sky Toss. And so that just overall doesn't matter what he goes for, even if he just goes uh, light units or roaches. Yes, it only does that matter. It doesn't matter. Nope. Okay. The only thing that matters is you might have to micro a little bit if he goes heavy banelings, and the way you can do that, I'll show you ways you can do that. Uh, I'll give you an idea. It's it's very fucking strong if he is mass banelings, and all you got to do is pull back the zealots when you engage. You just yeah yeah yeah. So archons in yep. the front. Yeah, yeah exactly. Or 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 immortals. Yeah. Okay. But like, can you with like for with two seconds sure. explain like what the what the what the, this rate? Like I said, I was just I just started playing Protoss, never played before. Like, what's the main like thing about this race? Is it like, <clears throat> do you supposed to kind of sit back and defend the whole game and just get this ball, whatever they talk about, and, and attack, or or is it more aggressive or like what's like especially versus Terran? Like I've I find. Um, so like I don't really know, but I know with Terran I was supposed to like always attack and drop and then this and yeah. that. And here yeah, I'm I'm not exactly sure what I'm supposed to do. Protoss has uh I would say two main playstyles. And you have a playstyle where you have the death ball style, and the death ball style should have a goal where it's not gonna be like, oh I'm just gonna i I'm gonna go for instance the build I'm recommending to you right now is Charge Lot Arcan Immortal. And that is not uh a, like, just charge the Archon Immortal is not a death ball style. That's why that's not the end of it. Uh, that's why we always talked about going Sky Toss later. Um, mm -hmm. But if you go charge the Archon Immortal, and that's like all you're going to do all game. You're like, oh, I'm just going to charge the Archon Immortal. I'm not doing anything anything beyond that. That's it. The way you'd want to play that is you would want to be constantly aggressive. You would you would want to be doing annoying shit to Zerg. Like, a way, if you're, if you're just going to stay charge the Archon Immortal all game... A better opener would probably be something like, oh, I'm going to go for a DT opener with a potential DT attack with a warp prism and then see if I can fuck the Zerg up and then go into Archons behind that so I can make the Zerg's creep contained all game. So it makes it really hard for the Zerg to, to defend himself, uh, which is constant. Mm -hmm. You're just constantly harassing. And then eventually you, you do go for like what is like more or more or less a charge the Archon Immortal all in because you're, you're literally never stopping. You're just continuously ramming pressure into the Zerg's face. To try to win the game, which is a high pressure build, which is, it's either a very, 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 very pristine timing, or it's like just constant aggression until you kill the Zerg. That is one way to play Protoss, uh, or like, or just any any race really. It doesn't have to be against the Zerg. It could be against any race. Another way to play mm -hmm. Protoss is uh, to lightly harass. You do Protoss has similarities to Terran in, in the sense that you do want to stay active. Uh, it's a little risky to play styles that just stay defensive the entire time. Um, you Because you have a lot of uh, <clears throat> potential to do aggression with Protoss. So, having a style that I'm, that I'm recommending to you, which is more of a death ball style, it's not all about doing like these fucking all-in attacks. It's more about 
doing a little bit of harassment with a, with the timing, which is if you chrono boost out the uh, adept glaive timing, that's going to possibly gain you a lot of damage. And we can also talk about how to micro the adepts to make it ideally easier for you. Uh, but the, it's like all, all about doing little bits of poking, like little poke damage, slow your opponent down, and then you ramp up your economy behind this and then inevitably ramp up into a death ball later on. So the Charge of the Arc and Immortal, all that is designed to do with the Death Ball style is it's designed to make sure your third doesn't die. And then off of three bases, then you switch into a more expensive style, which is Sky Toss. Mm -hmm. That's literally like Protoss. Yeah. Or go ahead, sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. The, I mean, in theory, I understand how this works. Yeah, it's just I feel like if I, if I try to micro those... Uh, uh, resonated glaive whatever they call it <laughs> adepts yeah. the adepts yeah i feel like if i try to micro them then i'll just i'll do more damage by not staying on top of production and building stuff versus like trying to kill some you know little probes sure well, or should or or maybe i should just go ahead and and, and prepared to lose a lot of games but just keep practicing on, on making sure I'll, I'll get better at my crank for now and i can give you an idea too that would make it really easy for you to not um it would it would help you like not you don't have to be like fancy as hell with the depths it could be something super basic it could be something as simple as this okay it's all you have to do and you, you tell me if this sounds like a good or a bad idea for you just see if you like the the way this sounds Let's just say you have five adepts and you're, you're running to his base. And then let's say you're, we'll use the Zanlaga tower on this map for like a point of reference. Okay. Let's say you're mm -hmm. right there. And then you, you cast a shade. You like you start running towards the Zerg's third and you cast a shade shortly after. And as your shade gets into his mineral line, you see a, like, like you have like two seconds to react to it and you see a fuckload of Zerglings and some roaches. And then all you do is you hit escape while selecting your adept still, yeah, you and then you just fucking go home. You literally just go home, and then you just you go. Okay, well, he's made a lot of units already, and I am no longer gonna try and micro this and be fancy about it. I'm just, I know that he made a lot of units, so he doesn't have as many drones as he should. So I'm gonna go home, and I'm just gonna start making. Uh, for now, because he has so many units, I'll start making like maybe like two rounds of stalkers out of your gateways, while you start going charge the Arkham Immortal. Uh, because you don't have charge yet, you don't want to make zealots when you don't have charge. That fucking they suck so bad without charge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then after you get charged, then you go into zealots and you just go zealot, uh, charge the archon immortal at that point, and you play defensive because he made so many units, and you saw that with your adepts. And if you don't see units, and then you see dr like you just see a queen and drones instead, and maybe just like a couple zerglings, then you're like, okay, I'll, yeah, I'll commit to ahead. that, and then I'll let it yeah. do damage, and you can just play like that. You could commit if there's no but, defense, basically. Yeah, but you let me go back. What you said that if 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 I shade in and I see a lot of units, you say okay, so he has a lot of units. Let's cancel. Let's build two more stalkers. But are are you saying that I should not constant like you know with Terran like going back to it like you have to constantly nonstop build uh, units? Well, you, yeah, you're, you're with Protoss. It's a little different because you're warping in units, so you're having to make a choice every time it's ready to go. And what I mean by that, by saying you can warp in stalkers, is you're going to be warping in stalkers. Like you're choosing the unit. I see. Yeah, you're, you're just choosing a stalker instead of a zealot, or yeah, or instead of a, I understand, I understand. But like, but you say as soon as as soon as all the warp gets on, I should always warp in units, right? I should never just like, you know, miss Mo the warp end. Most of, right? most of the time, most of the time, uh, you will your warp end's not always going to be 100 percent perfect. Like the second it's ready, it's going to be warping it again. It's not always going to be exactly perfect like that. Uh, the one thing you should keep rolling all the time that should always stay constant is your immortal production. As soon as that starts, that should always be pumping an immortal every, like make an observer and then make immortal, immortal, immortal. Just don't ever stop that. Uh, is that for every, is that for every game or just versus Zerg? Um, whenever you do a robo style that has immortals that are going to be involved with it. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And, uh, uh -huh. against like Terran, it's kind of the same thing, but instead of immortals, it's usually for builds that are more generic and more well-rounded will be like colossus um yeah yeah, yeah yeah and and do i need to add a second one eventually i mean i'm sure i do it's just i have second, no idea second robo that's a good time yeah no uh i would say oh this one is good yeah i would say yes to that if you were playing the pressure style and you were going to be going just charge the arc and immortal all game but it's too expensive to go immortals all game 
if you're going to transition to Sky Toss. So, and I do think Sky Toss is better, personally. Uh, I think Sky Toss is easier. Uh, once once you get comfortable with it, you're going to feel so much fucking stronger than your Zerg opponents. Because, I'm not going to lie, dude. You're going to be fighting Zergs. Once you get good with this kind of a style, you're going to be fighting Zergs that do not know how to fucking deal with Sky Toss transitions. Probably forever. Like, even in like 5 point, like 5k MMR, like you're talking about like GM players, they still can't deal with Sky Toss transitions. But going right away is not a good idea. Yeah, right? go, the, re the reason why is because Sky Toss cannot deal with Zerg that have a unfiltered economy. It's just like constant fucking droning. And you're like, okay, you have 80 drones and I have 60 probes, and you're just making mass corruptors now. Um, like, it, or like. Like a Hydra Queen Nidus all in or some shit like that will also kill you. Like it's mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. it's just so hard to hold that shit. the The only way you hold uh, Zerg aggression when you go Sky Toss is when you go for like Stasis Wards with minimal entrances to your base. So an Oracle opener into Sky Toss. That's like the only way you do it, and you have to have like cannons and shit. And you can't yeah. you cannot defend properly if there are three entrances to your base because it's too expensive to defend that many entrances. Like two is already pushing it. You're you're talking all of that regards to in regards to Diamond League, right? Yes, against it's, it's it's basically every league. Like you're gonna like you got to realize too, the entrances to your base even applies more to Diamond League. I would say because Diamond player reactions to Sky Toss, I guarantee is gonna be Mass Hydras like every time. Like, you're going to fight yeah. Zergs who just go Hydras all the fucking time. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, like, it's it's just, it's it, you could go, you, you could rush Sky Toss, but again, it's very, I would say it's more map dependent than any other version of Protoss. It just excels better if you have a map that has two entrances instead of three. And I, like, do, do you know the map uh, Golden Wall right now? I just... Fuck it! I just fucking deselect that shit. I sure. cannot deal sure. with no, that. Sure, no, it's fine. It's but th <laughs> that map is a good example of two entrances, because what you can do on that map is you can wall your natural ramp, and then you can mine out the mineral patches below your main, which creates a new base for you, and that has a, like a, your third south of your main, and you can you can actually cannon and stasis ward two entrances to your base, and you have three bases. So that's a good sky yeah. toss rushing map. No, it's all right. I mean, if you, if you don't recommend, you don't recommend. Uh, I guess. But, <laughs> okay. but because when you say sky toss, does that mean there's a specific build to it, yes. or it's any any build that eventually goes? No, into it's sky it's toss. a rush sky toss build. That build literally, yeah. you go for one oracle, maybe two, and then you just start making carriers. And uh, the idea is you defend your base with a couple like you have a couple gateways to wall off like this in this game you have and you make a couple units early on you make a forge early and you go cannon battery with a couple gateway units with stasis words mm -hmm. while going carriers okay but yeah I'm, i wouldn't recommend that for the general ladder map pool yeah, though yeah 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 it seems it also seems like it might be not too interesting to play it it's going to be... That kind of a build is fun when you just watch your opponent continuously suicide their army over and over and over. If if you get it off successfully. But yeah, you're going to be sitting in your base just staring at your buildings all the time, honestly. Alright, so... Uh, like, in this game, for instance, the kind of shit that we will not be doing uh, for the build I'm recommending you to do, uh, the, the, the transition build... Is you will not be doing shit like going double forge. You, that's a good thing versus Terran. It's not so good against Protoss, and it's not so good against, against Zerg, just because it's it ties up your gas more than it should. It delays your timing a lot more than you want, and also armor upgrade against Zerg specifically is not that useful because if the Zerg goes if if the Zerg actually goes for something that is not. Roach Hydra, which apparently, you know, this guy is going like Roach Ravager Hydra. So it actually is like the one time when it will be the most effective, actually. But if he goes for any type of AoE, essentially, if he goes for Lurkers, if he goes for mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Banelings, it's just a fucking waste of an upgrade. Seriously. It doesn't do shit for you. Because your Zealots run into... I'm, I'm, writing, I'm writing this all down. <laughs> oh, sure, sure, sure. Just just basically write down single Forge versus Protoss and, and Zerg. Two Forge versus Terran. Good 
good. Okay, because <coughs> okay. And literally, I just but and then if I have a single one, I just go weapon three upgrades. zero, yep. and then and then I and then I start. Okay. You oh, get wow. your weapon upgrades, and then against here's the thing, against Protoss, you go three weapons and then three armor. Against Zerg, you go three weapons and then three shield. Oh wow. Okay. One second. And the reason why is because against in like a Protoss versus Protoss, there's a lot of there's a high chance you're gonna have a situation where you're making like a lot of zealots later on in the game. They they are quite good in PvP. Against Zerg, you're you're you still could make zealots sometimes here and there later on. But with the style I'm telling you to do, the only thing you're gonna be using your gateways for most of the time. Uh, is counterattack zealots not or if you do make zealots they're always going to be for counterattacks not for main army mm -hmm. so it's not designed mm -hmm. to fight army so armor doesn't apply as much anyways but you're going to be using uh templars and you're going to be using archons to support your army and uh shield upgrades actually benefit the archons more and even more than that shield upgrades benefit you as a protoss player so much more at defending counterattacks as well from like zerglings yeah, the, uh, the the cannons, right? Yeah. And versus Terran, three attack and three... Armor. Uh, armor. Yeah, you want to... Definitely, you want to get armor and weapons together against Terran. Uh, it makes bio so much less effective if you have good armor upgrades. And then weapon upgrades are always, in general, just nice. Mm-hmm. And then you can, you can write down, like, a little hyphen or some shit... If, it, if you play against a Terran and he's going mech, you could actually play it more like a like a PvP. You would go three... You, you could actually stop going armor upgrades against mech. So if, if you know it's mech, you could just be like, alright, I'm not going to get armor anymore. Instead, I'm going to make units that cost gas uh, that are more important right now. And you could sacrifice your armor upgrade until you have level 3 weapons and then go back and finish off armor. Because armor does do something a little bit eventually, but it, it's it, armor is so irrelevant against like a Thor, against a Widow Mine, against a uh, Blue Flame Hillion, against a Siege Tank. Mm -hmm, it, mm -hmm. it just doesn't do shit really. <coughs> well, this is very helpful. Yeah, it is. I just, I just, I just thought that I'm like, let me add an extra four just because this is a diamond league, you know. There, you know, and not everyone's on like on top of like, look, this guy's attacking, he has so much gas and all the supply. Like, I feel like it, it kind of applies more for people who really know how to play the game. Yeah. But if you say I should start doing it now, then yeah, easier on me. All right, I have a question for you. Are you comfortable with sentries at all, or is sentries like? Do you not like sentries very much? No, not 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 at all. Okay. Not yet. So. I will say. But I mean, if if I if I don't use, I will. I never will. No, exactly. Uh, so. I, I I want you to use them, and this is how I want. This is kind of how the build's gonna go. Okay. This this is. I mean, again, I you don't have to write this down exactly because I want to give you an example build instead of just telling you everything. So you actually have a reference mm -hmm. to look at. But mm -hmm. the way I want the build to go for you is it's gonna go. Your like we're talking just about your production. Okay. It's gonna go stalker, adept, adept, and then three adepts at once because all your warp are gonna finish. And then after your five adepts are out, you're going to make three sentries. And then you're going to go into zealots and immortals and archons. Three gates you're talking about, right? Yes. Three gates. Yep. The, first three, uh, the first three units, the stalker, adept, adept, gets made off of one gate. And then gateways two and three finish at the same time warp gate finishes. So then you have a three round warp in every time after that all at once. So your first six and, units, uh, or go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, but when, when when I build uh, when I build those uh, gates, do I go one gate into a <coughs> cyber core and then two gates after? Yes. Or gate gate cyber core. It's a gate cyber core council gate gate. Ah, I see. Yeah. The only time mm -hmm. the only time you ever make gateway core gateway again. Is if your probe scout scouts that oh this, he's not he, yeah, exactly he's not expanding yeah, he's actually just twelve pulling me or some shit right. yep and you'll easily be able to tell that because uh, your probe should see a hatchery always already down when your probe crosses the natural and if it does not 
uh, and you go into his base and you're like, oh, the pool's done, or it's like 80% of the way done. Yeah, you, you know you're getting early pulled. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, and then what do I use those sentries for? So those sentries are just going to sit there. They, they build them early in the game so that when the guy does a timing, ideally, you're going to have, you're just going to generate, you're going to generate more and more and more energy. And uh, you can periodically throw a scout at your opponent with like a hallucinated phoenix. But in general, you're just going to sit there with the sentries. And if your opponent attacks you, like it would be something like this, okay? I'm going to go, I'm going to back this replay up a little bit just to show you mm -hmm. an example. Like imagine if you know he's, um, if you have some type of awareness that he's attacking you here. Like let's say you either built a pylon in front of where you wanted to expand. Or you have a zealot at the Zalnaga. Or... Uh, something, just something is out there in front, just to give you some type of aware, observer. Something is giving you awareness that he's he's coming, because you you always do want to kind of guard your expansion uh, at more of a choke point than at a wide open area if you can. Um, but I, I'm, I'm glad your army's at least at the base. Because uh, the reason why this is important is because it makes sentries just better. But we'll, we'll just talk about how your army is right now. Okay, fuck it. We'll, we'll talk about the. There is, you can always defend it everywhere you're at. It just makes it easier if you defend at more of a choke point. Because if you had sentries on the bridge right now, or like, you know, whereas Overseer is, if your sentries are like there and your army's there and he pushes you, you could actually force field him with less energy spent to trap some of his units in. And uh, mm -hmm. even though Ravagers can do things like break force fields, which a lot of people will be like, that's what can happen though. So sentries suck. They actually don't. Because you can re there is no cooldown on a sentry's force field, and you can always just reapply a force field right away if it breaks. Mm -hmm. And just buying yourself... Can it, do, can it do a lot of it? Can one sentry if, do a lot of once, force fields? Once, cool? Each sentry can cast four force fields. So if you have three mm -hmm. and they're maxed out, you can cast 12 force fields. Oh, it's 50 energy, yeah. So, and then, uh, <clears throat> to, to like block off this bridge, that would only take four force fields. It would seriously take just four and a line, and suddenly you have like a nice block here. And then all the, what your idea would be is you would want to have, like, just just a few seconds is all it would take. Because Immortal Archon is a fuckload of damage. Just, like, a few seconds to, like, trap everything on the bridge, get rid of it, kill it, and then the next piece of his army comes forward. And it's way easier to guard yourself. It's way easier to maintain your DPS while killing his. Yo, Beastie, thank you very much for the raid. Sorry, I'm doing a coaching lesson, guys, but welcome, everybody. Thank you. Much love. Much appreciated. Um, and then yeah, that's and then you you wouldn't be making sentries all game. You would you just make them early to stockpile energy, and then you're good to go so from there. So how many do you need? Three, like just four? three, 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 three. That's all you need. Yeah, because we're you're not you're not going for a timing. You're going for a defensive playstyle. And the more sentries you make, they're expensive as fuck on gas. The more you make, the longer it's gonna stick you on a composition that is like this. And if your goal ultimately is to transition later on. You, do, you don't really want to be investing too heavily into it because each additional sentry you make, the more likely you should be going for a timing that controls the Zerg with force fields aggressively rather than defensively. Yeah. <clears throat> Makes sense. All right, I'll try this. Is there um, is there a, a, a good time to put down Templar Archives? Yeah, it's going to be after you start Immortal Production. Like... Once you start really going into the Zealots, that's when you're going to do it because your resources are going to need to have a balance because Templars are basically just almost just pure gas. Zealots are actually pure minerals. So you're, you're yeah. going to be rotating it to in. To balance it out, basically. Yeah. yeah. Like you're not, you're not going to be able to afford a Templar Archives when you're making sentries and, and, and immortals at first. But as soon as you go back into making Zealots and your gas starts being, being a, a bit more freed up, then you go into an ar uh, Templar Archives. Yeah, I feel like I put that thing down way too late all the time versus anybody. <clears throat> all right, so go ahead and leave that replay, and I'm gonna, I want to make a game now, and I want to give you an example build of what we're talking about, of like you know, the uh, like just like a nice generic uh, standard rotation build into Sky. Uh. Oops. Hang on, am I going to be watching you playing now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just just one example game really fast. Um, okay. I would say save this. No, no, no. I, I want to. It's just uh, 
There's no way I can like record this one. No, you can't. You'll have the replay. You have the replay because you're in the oh, game. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, 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 cool. And then just, I would say, use this as like your checkpoint. Use this yeah. as your as your reference always. So like, this is why I didn't want to always just explain everything as like, uh, make sure you write this down. Uh, you got to do this and this yeah. and this. Yeah, 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 yeah. This will just make it easier because you can actually always be like, wait, what the fuck was it again? And you just look at the replay again. All right. So again, it's the only thing that can change in this build for you that uh, will make this. Uh, it might change the pacing of the game a little bit. Will be if you see no defense and just drones, you commit to the adepts. If you see lots of units, you do not commit to the adepts and you just go home. And you go, okay, well yeah. he, he made units. Let's just go home and now I'll use my adepts defensively instead of aggressively. And that's it. And everything else is going to be the same every time. Mm -hmm. I, gu I guess also your probe scout. You'll have to make the, the wall too if he goes for like a 12 pool. And you, all so you didn't you didn't you didn't scout with the first. Probe. You do, but that's you wait okay. until the gateway's done. You actually scout it off the pylon, and although that is, it's nice to be annoying sometimes and block the hatchery. You're not. You don't really. You, sh you should not give a fuck about that right now because you're not doing a timing anyways. Like. You're doing light pressure into defensive playstyle, so maximize mm -hmm. your own economy and uh, go for uh, just just wait, just use the one probe to not only scout but also build your gate. It'll make it easier for you. All right, and then we got a pro the the next probe. You want to kind of stop making probes at twenty just for a second. And you want to get your nexus down, and then also at the same time, get your core down. With the same probe. <coughs> and then you're good. Go back to your base, build your second gas, start restart probe production. And uh, and then now you're going to build your second pylon after, once your probe production's back on. Mm -hmm. The standard, basically, yep, right now. Yep, so yep, far. yep. And then you can throw... Once your pylon's down, you can throw another chrono into your probes and also a chrono into your gateway. One chrono goes mm -hmm. into your gateway for the stalker. Mm-hmm. There we go. Chrono the gateway. Make the warp gate upgrade on the... Uh, council. And now we can start saturating our natural... And we're, uh, with one of these, with like one of your first or second built probes, you can afford to build the council. And then we just built it. So now we're good. Uh, that's going to start. And again, uh, the timer I was saying was about 34 to 36 for gateways two and three. Because right now it, there is no, if the Zerg is playing like uh, macro style and they're not going for a one base all in, there's no way they can have speed yet. Which means if you're just if you make that chrono boosted stalker and then you're making adepts, you could deal with slowlings if they ran to you, and you could even mm -hmm. then make a responsive gateway. So like now, right about now is about when you're gonna want to make gateways two and three, right around the time when the council is finishing, and gateway three. And, and you will be able to afford to build off all three of them. Yes, once adepts. it's once it's done. Yep. And then you go back to making probes. Chrono boost to your council. Let's, we're going to chrono boost it like twice. Uh, just to get the upgrade to make sure we have that for the, you know, when we get there with our timing. <clears throat> Prioritize that versus probes, yeah? Yeah, just for a second. Just for a second. You, you have to kind of cut <clears throat> for a second just to get your gateways down. And then you go right back to probing. And then now our warp gate's gonna finish. Our, gate, our other gateways are finishing right now as well. So we're gonna wait for the warp gate just to finish and turn all these into warp gates. Chrono boost the council one more time. And at this time, you can also th throw down your robo right about the time you're gonna make your three adepts. And then you make the other three adepts. And you can throw down gases at your, at your natural at the same time. And this is when you move out. You can put your stalker back in the wall. And you can send a probe towards your third to get ready to get ready to take your third. And then we go ahead and throw our third down, throw a pylon down next to it. And we're now getting ready to make our three sentries. 
uh, that we were just saying a second ago. We actually supply blocked ourselves like a champion. Supply blocked. <laughs> yeah, we need to make a, make a pylon when you make your robo again as well. Uh, and then we'd be like, oh, he's a, let's just say hypothetically, he has roaches yeah. and lings, and we don't want to fuck with that. Uh, behind this, we we have the sentries being made. We have charge being Three we're gonna have charge being started and an immortal. And uh, we'd start going into uh, zealots after the three centuries. And then once you have enough gas to throw down your additional um, uh, tech, you can then throw that down too. And we're talking about throwing down the, the forge and the temple archives. Mm -hmm. Okay. All of that is not even building this uh, the starport yet. Yes, or you're not building the stargate until probably like 150 supply. Uh huh. Oh, okay. So it's it's a, it is going to be a transition. You're gonna, you're going to do a charge the arc on immortal timing. Uh, and now we can go back to Colonel Wisting probes for just a sec, just to get our third base saturated really fast. Now we can also throw down our forge and our uh, archives because we have the gas to afford it. And we can throw down, while making probes and while making zealots, we can start getting ready to throw down our additional gateways. Uh, because our third base is going to start hitting that ideal saturation at this point. And we also, you also want to kind of prioritize this a little bit just to get your, give yourself a little bit less of a surface area on your third. I would say always build your gateways like I'm doing right now. Your additional ones. So you, you can have a little bit more of a defensive posture if the Zerg goes for like this big fat fucking Ling all in on your third base as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now our, our forge is done, so now we can start making a couple of Templar uh, along with Zealot just to spend our gas as well and start making some Archons. And now you, your Chrono Boost can go back into like Chrono Boosting out like uh, your forge now. <clears throat> And you can see our sentries right now have they they all have almost 150 energy, so we're talking that's the that's the realm where they're gonna have nine force fields ready to go already, which is a fucking lot. And at this stage too, uh, you can get ready to start moving out of your base a little bit, uh, because you're you're starting to have a very high supply, and what you can do now is you can start a f you could start a fourth base. And you can get ready to do your timing because we're getting to that point to where we're about ready to want to attack. Now, lastly, we're going to maybe throw down like two more gates. We're going to go up to about eight gates and stop. And we're not going to make any more after eight. Uh, and now <clears throat> do like one more round of warpins. And ideally what you want to, you're, what you're going to want to aim for is roughly about 150 supply is going to be when you really throw down your, uh, uh, your Stargate, your uh, Stargate transition, mm -hmm. and yeah, so like right about now, like one when you're once you're in that r that territory where it's really close to it, we're at 151. Right now, we could be like, all right, go to the main base, let's start one Stargate, just one for now, and let's start getting weapon upgrades on the uh, Cyber Core. Start Chrono boosting not only your Forge but also your Cyber Core now. Uh -huh. And once you have this all kind of set up, last thing I would recommend you do is maybe make like two cannons at your fourth, one cannon at your third, one cannon at your natural, one cannon at your main in the mid in each mineral line. And the reason why is because it'll help a lot with zergling run buys, and it's not too expensive to invest into this. You transfer some probes, maybe that are mining out of your patches, warp in another round of zealots, and now you go for that timing. You just literally go for a fucking timing. A lot of Zergs, if you do this fast, will honestly just fucking die to this timing. And you're still making, you are still making Zealots, you're still making Immortals, but you're gonna probably stop making Archons unless this guy is Mass Banelings. If you know he's Mass Banelings, you can make another round of Archons and go up to maybe like eight Archons. But if he's got just Roaches, you can chill on like four, four or five, and that'd be fine. Uh, and then you gotta kind of like go back to your base. Once you see the Stargate's done, throw, go back to it and throw down your Fleet Beacon now. And like three more Stargates. So you're going to go up to like four Stargate for now with a uh, with a Fleet Beacon. And you, you know, you're still doing your timing. You can still make Zealots. Zealots are still good to make all the time because you're trying to save your gas for Stargate. You're not trying to spend all your okay. gas on Archons right now. That's why I'm saying you want to like wait on Archons a little bit if you have to. If it's Massling Bane, Archons are great. But if it's not, then, you know, uh, Stargate good.
Now, you, if you look at his natural, you can see kind of how many force fields we have here. Like, I just have so many fucking force fields to work with. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So it's, you definitely can do it. If you don't get attacked and you're the one attacking, you can be aggressive with these sentries with the stockpiled energy, which is great. Uh, and as you're starting to lose units, because you will lose units, this is when you're like, cool, now I'm actually going carriers. And and you, you, you still make zealots. You still make zealots. But as you lose them, you are switching into carriers. And this is what you do every uh -huh. fucking time. And then it's all about just, you know, maintaining your chrono boosts on your council and your forge. And you're good to go. And that's it. That's literally all you're going to do. Do you build a mothership also yeah, you, with yeah, the you, first bunch of fourth? You are going to prioritize your uh, your carrier. But if you have enough money, once your, star, once your stargates are filled with carrier, you can uh, switch into a mothership. Mm -hmm. Or you, you can add in a mothership as well. And uh, any, like, so what's the final uh, army looks like? Is it all carriers and you're, mothership, you're, or there's some ground stuff? This is what your final army should look like, okay? You're going to have uh, mothership. You're going to have probably two observers with it. You're going to have uh, roughly in the, in the ballpark of, like, 14 carriers or 15 carriers or so. You're going to have maybe, like, three to four archons, and you're going to have, like, six Templar. It, 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 or either oh, that for, for corruptors or yeah e either you're gonna have uh, some like six templar and three archon or if you're like you know what i'm not comfortable with storm yet i don't give a shit that's fine you could actually just add those extra templar as more archon so you could go up to like six archon and just carrier as well like eventually you're gonna need to get better with storm but if you're not comfortable with it yet and you want to just start doing the build with no storm is easy okay oh storm is so easy okay for me, yeah okay for some reason <laughs> yeah i use it all the time I right, get, um, uh, and then yeah, th then it would just be you're gonna have like six Templar then, uh, ideally roughly about six, to have backup storms with your army. And, okay. uh, and go ahead. No, no. no well, there is is six Templar just good overall for when you're playing versus other stuff also like like Bio Terran whatever. Is six a good number? Yes, yeah, I would say I would say six to eight is generally it's always yeah. going to be good for you. Between mm -hmm. six and eight is always going to it's going to be enough storms to really get the fight going your way, and it gives you uh, yeah. also a couple because it gives you a, a few storms where it's like that storm wasn't great. That storm wasn't great. Okay, that storm was really good. Okay, that storm wasn't great. That storm wasn't great. That storm was also really good. Like you have enough, uh, you have room for error. Where it's because you can't always expect every storm is gonna be fucking perfect. So if you only had like two Templar, you're you're kind of pushing it. Uh, eight gives you room for error. Plus you're gonna have good stability with the amount of. St it's not too much, but it's enough to like get the job done basically. Yeah. Cool, man. So this, I will be able, I'm going to be look. yeah, I'll look through this stuff many times, obviously, and I'll have it in my replays, yeah? Yeah, uh, if you go to replays right now, you should, if you leave that game and you go to replays right now, you should already have it, and you can rename it too, so you don't lose it. Yeah. Um, can I ask you, we're not going to watch the second game, uh, but can I ask you um, just uh, one sort of major question? Because yeah. when I was playing Terran, I was looking at watching a lot of your videos which was really helpful uh but you were really explaining like specifics as to like when you play like what you think about it. you know when you attack uh, and you when you go back you kind of like press these buttons or when you like build stuff in the background like just these mechanics like that's in your head i can't seem to really get it with protoss like you know what i mean if, if when you're harassing like what's like this background thing that you should you like click back and like warp in stuff and then click back into the army yeah well, protoss is or... a little different because of warpins you can't macro it while not looking at it you have the only way you can warp in uh while looking at your army is if you have a prism and that warp in is designed to be continued aggression uh one of the i would say one of the fastest ways you're gonna be able to macro it is uh, either double tap, like you can, uh, let's, just, let's just say your main army is on one and your gateways are on four. You can go four, four, gateway, warp in, one, one, go back to your army. But you will have to look at your base more often with Protoss because of the warp in mechanic and the way that works. Yeah. And you should also, you, you should, uh, with the last thing I'll say is, uh, you should not sacrifice warp gates either because warp ins actually go like, it's like 25% faster than actual build time and like once you have the warp gate every unit builds like 25 percent faster because the cooldown is shorter than what the build time was previously yeah no of course um but if you click double if you double because uh, w is i think is for the warp in so yeah. if you click w twice it's not going to go back into the no it uh, will gate. not 
I don't believe that will work. Okay. Uh, cool, man. Can I ask one last one before we're done? Yeah, you, you, feel free, man. Ask any question you have on your mind right now. Go for it. Let's go. I I have... Um, I understand. Is there is there basically a specific like general timing for when you're supposed to put the forge down, for example, or like you're you're like say you're playing versus Terran, or or you know I understand the build for the Zerg, this one that we have. Yeah. But is there like, uh, you know, like like you have okay, the like the third base is nor normally comes in at 4:45, or is there like a normal so a timing for forge and like. Two two additional because like, you it's, know you put yeah, two yeah. gates. It's it's easier. The is there like a time? It's yeah. easier against Protoss and Terran. It's against Zerg. It's a little bit different, but generally this is how you want to do it. Okay, when you against Zerg, you're gonna put a forge down when you take a temp, a Templar archives, so they pair together. Against yeah. Terran and Protoss, you put your forge down when you take your Twilight Council. They pair together, with the builds that I'm kind of uh, recommending you to do. Mm-hmm. -hmm. Um, so you're, you, cause you're not going to be doing builds that are like, uh, uh, super early forges with super early, like up, upgrades to, to do like plus two timing or plus one timing. Yeah. Because generally your play style, what it sounds like, for the, at least what we just talked about was ma mainly the Zerg matchup is you're playing a play style that has no real limit. It has no end early on in the game because it doesn't have this like timer that you have to hit. It's an open-ended like, uh, continuation build that just goes towards max and you just have more power throughout the game. And uh, against Zerg, it, that's definitely a Sky Toss transition. Against Terran, that could be something as simple as you're just continuously expanding while going like uh, Charge Lot Stalker Colossus with uh, maybe some Templars for Storm and maybe some Archons uh, as mm -hmm. well. And against, against other Protoss players, it could be something as simple as you just go Charge Lot Archon Immortal uh, literally all game. And you, you just make more expansions and more gateways. And those against Protoss, that could that could eventually become a double forge. Against Terran, you could actually do that off of single forge. And against Zerg, again, it's single forge. It's pretty much yeah, single yeah, forge yeah. for all of them. But you could eventually go double against Protoss because you're making a lot of immortals with Archons and Zealots. Because well, you're again, you're going for expansions. You're going for probes. No, you mean double is versus Terran? You said no. Uh, because against Terran, you're going for high tech units like Colossus. Ideally, off the fort, you don't. I, I would not recommend going immortals against Terran. Uh, I would recommend going Colossus because what you're gonna find, un, un, like, unless it's mech, you're. I would say yeah, Colossus are probably not gonna be your opportune unit to go against mech. Uh -huh. But if you're fighting Bio and you go Colossus, you're going to put the Terran in such a hard spot that they have to micro so much better to deal with that kind of shit than what most of your opponents will be able to, to will be able to do. I guarantee if you go Colossus yeah. against Terran, most of your Terran opponents will just no, get no, no, fucking No, 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 I do, I do, I do. Like I good. said, I, I really have no problem with with Terran and Protoss. It's just Zerg is like, my winning rate is like 15%, literally. It's nice. It's rather nuts. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, uh, you already kind of got it. But, yeah, just I would say pair the Forge with Council against the other races, and then Zerg pair it with the Templar Archives. Yeah, that makes sense. Cool, man. And, and the last one, which is it's like a nail in the coffin like how do you bloody defend a cannon rush is there like an easy yeah, way to yeah. do it yeah okay dude let's uh let's talk about this really fast because okay. the new season started and i like lost like 20 games in a row <laughs> okay so, I don't know, like, so and... i'm gonna ask you a question really fast about your opener and you tell me if this sounds like what you do do you put your first gateway your pylon is near the ramp your first gateway goes yeah. on the ramp and your second gateway follows up shortly after and goes to the other part of the ramp so you're you're basically creating like a nice wall with a little spot you can w walk through with your first two gateways yeah just in case so i can <clears throat> put the uh, pylon in there if there are depths coming. yeah okay perfect so that's how you should open if you want to have the easiest time against cannon rush and what what happens then is what i do is when my gateway my first gateway is at 50 percent completion i will send my second probe forward it's a this is a little earlier than you're supposed to build it, but it does not stop your probe production, so it does not matter. You w walk forward, you build your second gateway when your first gateway is at 50% production. You then use that probe to do a thorough scout in a, in, in a like a semicircle around your expansion, your natural, just to see if you're getting proxied and cannon rushed, just to make sure. If you are, mm -hmm. you pylon block your main base. 
And if you if you are if you are then getting cannon rushed and you block your main base, it is so fucking easy to defend it because you can get your stalkers out before he breaks into your base, and it makes defending a cannon rush a thousand times easier. The only time defending a cannon rush is really annoying is when you let the probe in your base, and then it's running in circles around your base while cannons are building on the low ground from a second probe, and then with the cannon on the low ground, he then starts building cannons on the high ground. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's why you need to block your base, because you prevent that probe and from doing shit in your base while you're building stalkers. Oh, so stalkers is the unit of choice. Yes. You don't want to make zealots, you don't want to make adepts, you want to make stalkers, because... And you want to you want to also stop, if you realize you're getting cannon rushed, stop chrono boosting, and you start making... Like, you can still make probes, but you stop fucking chrono boosting, and you only save chronos now for stalker, because you need to get them out mm -hmm. as fast as you can. Um, and I'm, I'm not building the third gate? No. Like, closer uh, to, to the base or something? So, you... Uh, it depends on what kind of a cannon rush it is. If it is... Uh, if it's like zealots and uh you know like proxy zealots and cannons uh yes you're gonna probably build a gateway before your gateways even start taking damage because you're like okay well I'm, i know i'm gonna need to build this but uh yeah like you'll have to, that's you'll have to see that when that happens but if it's just a pure cannon rush it's just pylons and cannons you can make your uh gateways a little bit later but you will also once again still probably make new gateways because there's a good chance your gateways in the front are probably gonna die uh, so you, you will eventually make them, but again, the priority is making your stalkers first and then making gateways, not just making gateways. Because you don't have enough money to do all of it. You'll have to cut yeah. corners somewhere. Um, but and, and, and let, let, cool, the, the final thing, which I didn't really explain, is let's just say you do see a cannon rush, and before you block your base, he gets a probe inside your base. And he even builds a pylon in your base. The only thing you got to do is kill that fucking probe before he makes cannons. And like, or kill him as he starts making cannons. So what you do against someone who does that shit, ideally, it, this is when you have to micro a little bit. Ideally, have like one or two probes chasing his probe in your base, and then every time he does a lap around where your pro, the rest of your probes are, try to micro it a little bit to where you can maybe like pop some extra damage Lock on top him. of him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but don't chase, don't chase him forever with like twelve probes or something like that. Don't, don't do that. Yeah, shit. yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. But uh, and then if he, if he, if you see him like. Starting to run towards, if, let's, let's just say he does a lap, okay? He 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 takes, he runs into your base, he builds a pylon where the cannons are going to follow up further into your base. He does a lap, and then he goes and, you know, runs around, and then he comes back to that pylon eventually. If you can, if you see the cannon is not able to cover it yet, and you're like, okay, he's going to start cannons up there right now, I already know he is. You can try to pull more probes then, like eight probes then or something, to try and make sure you can just kill that fucking probe and kill any cannon he starts. But ideally, mm -hmm. again, you're, you, I... Just because you're pressuring the probe like this is going to delay how fast he can do this as well. It's not going to be perfect for him. Uh, that's when it's going to buy you time to build stalkers. And all yeah, and, yeah. and stalkers are basically like your tourniquet, where it's like you're going to like stop the fucking cannon contamination in your base at a certain point, even if it means you have to sacrifice some of your buildings. As long as it hasn't gotten all the way to your nexus yet, you're, you can still make it work. Yeah, yeah. Cool, man. Thank you. That was very helpful. Yeah. Thank you for doing a coach lesson, dude. I appreciate it. And, um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I will again, I'll have this VOD over to you by like tomorrow. So you can always watch it again. And, you know, you have, I mean, you have the replay too, which is great, but you can always hear what we, we talked about again if you want to go over that again yeah. too. Perfect. Cool. Thanks so much, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you, dude. And have a good rest of your day. Good luck. And, uh, yeah, feel, yeah. feel free as well to ask questions yeah. in the stream if you have any more. Oh, uh, cool. Yeah. Well, until next time then. Cheers. All right. Later, man. Take it easy. Bye. All right, guys. That has been another coaching lesson. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you guys for hanging out. I will see you all in the next video. Uh, until then, good luck to you guys as well. And uh, much love.